just to know that there is one person out there that sees me and sees what I'm going through. Uh, it has been an extremely long journey, but I've always been the optimist and I was always very grateful that I was still here. 35-year-old Holly Rennie has lived in Kawaro with her partner and two children. The former operations manager is not able to work due to a long-term battle with a chronic fatigue syndrome, also known as ME. The condition is crippling, leaving her unable to perform the simplest of daily tasks. It's a far cry from what her life used to be like. Seventh form, I had an extreme workload. I was sports prefect, was playing for at least five hockey teams. I was captain of the first 11 hockey team and playing a number of rep hockey teams and club. But I was falling asleep in classes. It wasn't long before Holly's health took a dramatic turn for the worse. She was formally diagnosed with ME. I, d I just didn't know if, if anyone was ever going to be able to work me out. So I let it go and I was lighting the fire. I found in, in, right there in the newspaper article was a article about chronic complex illness centre in Tauranga. A lady who had ME and to have Elizabeth come to my home and actually understand every single thing, all the symptoms, everything that I had been through and was going through was extremely pivotal in my turning, turning a page in my healing. It was this discovery that led Holly to a meeting with Elizabeth McGugan, a field officer from CCIS, Complex Chronic Illness Support. And she just wanted to know more about MECFS because she'd been unwell for a really long period of time and just was searching for answers. She's a really intelligent person, so she was hunting and researching and doing as much as she could. And she was pretty sure it sounded like this condition, but she just wanted to talk to me and find out. So we had a really good chat and I ran her through the criteria and she just ticked every box for MECFS. Um, she ended up being supported by her whānau to look after her, so she actually had to move out of her home into another house to live, to be taken care of and given the things she needed. But then she became, unfortunately, really severely unwell and had to be admitted to hospital. Elizabeth knew Holly needed home care, but as ME isn't recognised as a disability, she wasn't entitled to any support. She reached out to the Bay of Plenty medical wellbeing provider, Te Puna Oro o Matatua, and finally, some good news. I was visited by a social worker because I had decided to come home. When I had told her that I had asked for home help um, previously by my doctor and, and did I need to ask, do, do anything, she said, no, I'll initiate it for you. Oh, this, is, this was the first time someone had, apart from Elizabeth helping me with Dr. Valings, a health provider had gone out of their way to actually initiate help for me and my situation with Emmy. Since then, I've had two home help ladies. One, her name was Debbie as well, beautiful soul. They tell me to sit down when I'm the worst person at telling myself to sit down. Um, this is what I need. And um, to not be made to feel guilty that I can't do my job as a mother. Um, very big thing for a mother with ME to overcome, that they're not able to do their job properly. While Holly may have been able to access the help she so desperately needed, that's often not the case for others battling ME. Shirley Hyde spent years trying to access home care. She now lives at Tetoki Christian Healing Centre after qualifying for help due to her age. I'm over 65. If last time when I had it 30 years ago, I was eligible for nothing, nothing. And we didn't know anything about it. People were all saying it was in your, my brain, I was stupid, I was just, you know, whatever. And it was really hard, even though the consultant ended up after two weeks in hospital and told me, yeah, it is a real disease, it's physical, you've got to change your life, etc. There was no help offered to me at all. 
you know, when my body packed up, they were the ones, and often it was my girls. And they were only were about six and ten or something. And they would have to come along and pry me off whatever I was holding on to to hold myself up, and, um, and then ca ca half carry me and drag me to the chair or the bed or whatever, you know, the sofa. And that was really hard. And my little boy, he just... It was really hard. Not, to not be able to look after my kids. It's really amazing that Holly's been able to receive some home care. Um, I have yet to find many people under the age of 65 who have actually been able to find some support um, in their homes. Unless a GP can find a loophole or a coexisting condition, it's really hard for people to get any support in their home. But it shouldn't be this way, it shouldn't be about luck. You know, it shouldn't be because of loopholes. It should be that people actually have a right to be taken care of when they're incredibly unwell. Elizabeth says there's a major gap in the system that needs to be fixed, and she'll continue to advocate for those battling this debilitating illness. Talk to our doctors, talk to our family members, talk to our MPs. You know, we need to get out there and talk about these conditions. We need to advocate for people. One of the big problems with this illness is you're so sick, you're at home all the time. You can't do the advocacy. You can't do the mahi around it. You're unwell, you really aren't suffering. So you can't go out there and say, excuse me, MP, can you please do something about this? Because you need to put your energy into healing. You need to put energy into standing at the bench and chopping some bread, you know? But we still have an invisible condition that affects our lives really profoundly. We think we have to be go, 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 go. And that's, that was killing me. That was literally killing me. If I had had prevention in my teenage years, there's no way I would have had these complications. And I would have lived a normal life. In a statement to Local Focus, the Ministry of Health says that people can access a range of home care through their local needs assessment service coordination, an organisation set up to assist with those who have home care needs. It also says people who are ineligible for those options can also access a range of other support through their local district health board. For Local Focus, I'm Nathan Morton.